Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for joining me today. Um, this is uh, uh, my name is Lilia McKenzie. I'm an orthodontist. I practice in uh, New Brunswick, Canada, and uh, I really would like to thank you all for attending. This is only my second webinar for Propel, um, and I'm just thrilled that I've been invited. Um, and I'm so excited to be able to share um, some of my um, clinical experience um, that I have with Propel. Um, so before we get started, um, I'd like to thank my team at Smile Blueprint. It's a company that I have for um, optimizing treatment plans, uh, clear aligner treatment plans. Um, Jonathan Mastin is the rep at Pro, uh, the Canadian rep for Propel, and he's been fantastic. And I would like to thank him for inviting me to do this. Um, Lori William at Strategics is uh, my practice management consultant who has worked on um, optimizing my um, systems in the office for clinical and administrative efficiencies. And of course, my team at McKenzie Orthodontics who are with me and who helped me prepare. Um, just a brief disclosure, I'm not employed by a dental company. Uh, I, I speak for Propel and for Align Technology. Um, I own a clear aligner treatment planning and optimization company. Um, I own shares in dental companies and my family members are not employed, nor, they, nor do, do they own shares in dental companies. And I'm compensated, compensating, compensated for consulting and evaluating products for Propel and for Align Technology. Um, I'm being compensated tonight for Propel. The opinions in the presentation are entirely mine and they don't necessarily reflect the views and opinions of, um, uh, of the company that is sponsoring me. Um, the slides um, tonight are provided for educational use and are not to be used for advertising or for product endorsement. Um, the presentation has been approved for continuing education credits and no photographs, audio or video recording are permitted. So now that that's out of the way, um, I'm going to tell you briefly about, about myself. I have a family, I have three kids. I have a 13 year old son who wants to be a math genius. I have a 12 year old son who wants to be a Minecraft YouTuber, um, but if all else fails, he wants to be a lawyer. My husband's an architect and uh, my baby is uh, a year old and he wants to be a milk, um, a cow farmer for the milk. And um, this is my office. So I have um, three offices. They're very, very small. Um, I travel between them and my um, flagship practice has um, three chairs and this is my entire team. I have two clinical assistants and two administrative um, assistants, and that is it. Um, so last year I became a Diamond Plus Invisalign provider. That means that um, we treated over 400 patients with Invisalign in the year. And um, we did that all, so there are four people plus myself out of three chairs. Um, so I just want to briefly show you um, how to how I run my practice efficiently enough to be able to do that. I um, received my dental degree from McGill at the Faculty of Dentistry, and then I specialized orthodontics at the University of Rochester. I've been practicing for 12 years. Um, and um, it, it's blurred out, not because you don't have your glasses, um, I just blurred it out so that you can't read the patient's names, but this is the, this is a schedule that I would run on a regular busy day. So not every day is busy like that. Most of the days are actually uh, less booked than this. I just wanted to show you that every day we always, even in a busy, efficient practice, uh, we always have um, appointment times that are left for patients who are calling in and wanting to get in, or their um, Invisalign aligners arrived early and uh, you know, a week ahead of schedule, we're gonna call them and try to get them in so that they, we can free up a, a spot later on. Um, so um, we always, have time to book consults and we always have time to book starts the same day or the next day. Um, so in a practice like that, 
treatment time is really important. Um, and and, and I, I find that as a clinician, that is the one thing that I have almost full control over. Um, and treatment time is important because clinically, it's associated with a decreased risk of root resorption, a decreased risk of patient burnout, um, because patients get tired with hygiene, they get tired with wearing aligners and wearing elastics and coming to appointments. So the shorter the treatment time, the better the compliance of the patient. It's, it's associated with a greater patient satisfaction. No one has said, oh, why am I done early or has been upset for being done ahead of schedule. With, it's definitely um, associated with increased team satisfaction, um, simply because there are not as many patients who we are seeing for several, for several years. And from a practice management standpoint, it is associated with increased profitability. So decreased number of appointments, decreased chair time, easier appointments, which is easier on our team, and fewer supplies used. So I'm just going to show you that I have worked in my own practice in a way that has not been very efficient and how I've gone from the not very efficient way of of doing orthodontics to sort of a more efficient way, which has decreased the stress on me and my practice. Um, so this is a 13-year-old girl with a retrognathic mandible class 2 division 1 malocclusion with significant overjet and a 90% overbite. Um, she has proclined upper and lower incisors, and overall it's a skeletal class 2 malocclusion. And so she was treated with a crossbow appliance, um, so an expander, a mini expander, and some um, forces springs. And then that was followed after six months of that, we did full fixed appliances, so braces and um, some class two elastics. And her tr uh, overall treatment time was 24 months, 17 office visits. This is her D bond, and you can see some gingival inflammation because maybe the brushing and the flossing weren't, um, weren't the best. And this is her at her um, first retainer check the gingival tissues have healed and the result overall is quite good. Um, and again, that took two years. And when we calculate how much time this patient spent in the office and we total all the clinical appointments that we did, um, the total clinical time was eight hours and 20 minutes. So that's how much time I spent with her. And a similar patient, a very similar patient, this is a very similar class to division one malocclusion with a similar overjet and overbite. She's a similar age, um, quite proclined incisors, um, was treated with clear aligners and um, high frequency vibration. So I'm going to talk about Propel V Pro. And um, she changed her aligners every three to five days. And this is her after 16 weeks, so this three and a half months. And this took four office visits. And now she's in a retention with um, a nighttime clear aligners, uh, clear retainers. Um, so to compare, so they're very two very similar patients with very similar outcomes. The total clinic time for the second patient was an hour and 45 minutes. So you can imagine how much easier this is on the patient and how much easier it is on the office and all the systems that we have set up in the office. Um, if a patient spends only less than two hours for their entire treatment. I'm going to go over the workflow in my office um, for a patient who um, just has regular Invisalign, so no acceleration. Uh, my first appointment is a consult and start scan. So we do uh, a blended consult start appointment. Um, and that takes approximately 40 minutes. Uh, we, I, I do an exam and we take photos, pan, Seth, um, scan. I run the outcome simulator. I uh, dictate the prescription, the Invisalign prescription to my um, assistant. I do a treatment presentation and we go over financials. The patient gets his or her aligners four weeks later, 
And during that appointment, we bond the attachments, uh, we bond any buttons for elastics, start elastics, and we go over all the home care instructions. It's approximately 30 minutes. We can usually do it. It's one of those catch-up appointments. We can do it in 20. Um, it's if the patient has a lot of questions, we leave that extra time. Our aligner check appointments are 15 minutes. And so we check the align, the fit of the aligner, the way we compare um, the ClinCheck treatment plan and I do IPR if needed. And at that time, um, we, we booked the rescan appointment. So uh, before I started using Propel, almost all of my patients um, had to have a rescan and a second set of aligners, so additional aligners. So I keep all the attachments for the rescan. We take photos, we scan, I write a new prescription, and then we go back to delivering aligners and then another aligner check. And finally, during the debond, I would take the attachments off and we would take the records and order the clear retainer. For all of my patients, I use the Invisalign retainers. They're the same retainers as um, Vivera, except it's only one set instead of four sets. So I'm just going to stop here and let you know that if you have any questions during the presentation, if there are any questions that pop in your head, please write them down in your, um, uh, please write them down in the question box. I promise to answer all of the questions at the end of the presentation. Um, and I just know that the questions will come up while I'm talking. So just write them all down. I will go back and I will answer everything. Um, so in a practice that is very efficient, um, my initial my initial feeling about accelerated treatment is, why do I need it? My treatment times are short. I don't want to add any extra payments for my patients. I certainly don't want to be selling something in the beginning of patient in the beginning of treatment. I already do. Um, I already do a lot of uh, talking about how clear aligners work and the benefits of clear aligners. Uh, I have an over 95% um, over 95% of my patients are treated with clear aligners. So I just didn't didn't feel that accelerated treatment would really fit my practice well. Um, just because I have patients just like this one, um, so she's a 17-year-old female. She has a retrognathic mandible. She, it's a surgical class two division one malocclusion. Uh, the patient was not ready for surgery. She did not want surgery. Her mom did not want surgery for her. Um, and so they said, can we, can we have some sort of compromise treatment? Um, and, uh, just to show you, if you take a look at this photo over here, you can really appreciate the amount, the overjet, and how deep the bite is. The lower incisors are impinging on the palate or gingiva. Um, so I'm just going to show you the ClinCheck. Um, so I took a video of the ClinCheck, and here you can really appreciate um, the amount of the overjet. And, um, the I have a system for treating my class two deep bite patients that involves a series of steps that I make sure that every patient has in their ClinCheck treatment plan in order for the treatment to go well. Um, I have written them down on the next slide, but in fact, I give lectures like their whole study club lectures um, for Align Technology that teaches orthodontists how to set this up so that the treatment actually looks very similar to the ClenCheck. So I'm quickly going to go over um, the, my strategies for correcting a class 2 deep bite malocclusion. So it's arch expansion, um, alignment of the teeth without extractions, incisor intrusion, premolar extrusion, bite ramps, and class 2 elastics. And I know it sounds very simple and intuitive, uh, but to implement all of this in, in a clean check uh, takes, takes some skill. And so this is her after eight months. She had 34 aligners. She changed them weekly. Um, 
she we did this with four office visits so basically she had the consult start scan and then we delivered the aligners um and then because she was a student she went away came back eight months later and we i removed the attachments and ordered the retainer so she had the retainer delivery in her fourth appointment um and you can see how the class two is almost fully corrected i certainly did not expect a correction like that the deep bite is overcorrected. i'm sort of hoping that some of it relapses um and the midlines are on and you can see how her whole face changes um that retrognathic mandible comes forward and um so so if i have patients like this why would i want to add something else to their treatment um, and i just want to show you because i know the question will come up um, how stable is this class to correction so i always get this question and i just want to address it now um, so because i developed developed this system of um, clin check setup in order to treat these patients in the most efficient way possible um, and because i teach this I am starting to get questions like, wow, this looks amazing, but what about it six months down the road or two years down the road? So I actually recalled my patients who are in the presentations and asked them to, um, to come back several years after their treatment for me to take a post debone, like two years or three years post debone records. And this is one of them. She's 13 years old and you can see, um, very proclined upper incisors, class two division one malocclusion, and uh, very similar, very, very similar clin check um, set up to the patient whom you saw previously. Um, and, and this uh, young lady's treatment is also done very quickly. It's done in seven months and five visits. Just note the difference in her profile. The deep bite is corrected. Um, the um, um, proclination of the upper incisors is corrected. The class two is corrected. And this is her. I just saw her. This is three years after debond, and her retention is only nighttime Invisalign retainers. Um, and maybe a tiny little relapse in the midline, but overall, um, the occlusion has held really well. And this is not just one patient, basically all the patients whom I recalled who were treated this way uh, came back with occlusions looking like this. So that system of setting up a clin check very efficiently works just as well for a class two division two. So a, a deep bite with retroclined upper incisors. And I'm going to show you I'm going to show you the treatment plan for this patient. So it's a lot of incisor intrusion. We're overcorrecting the um, we're overcorrecting the overbite um, and uh, setting up almost uh, an interior open bite. Um, this is a almost a full cusp, cusp class two malocclusion and that is corrected using elastics. So there's no mandibular advancement and there's no auxiliaries uh, other than elastics. And you can see how this patient um he's finished in six months um the class two is almost fully corrected and in fact we ran out of overjet for the full class two correction and in, he's finished in five office visits so why would i use propel well, because I get patients like this. So it's a very similar patient. It's a 23 year old female with a retrognathic mandible, very similar uh, facial features to the previous patient. Um, she has retroclined incisors and a deep bite, and I do the exact same clin check setup, which works like magic. And she's very motivated and she wants to finish and, and she's very compliant and her hygiene is amazing. And this is her, um 34 aligners so about eight and a half nine months into it and her bite is still not great and she's still not happy with the overbite correction and um, she's developing the 
famous posterior open bite. And so eventually she finished 20 months later and it took 14 office visits. And so the only explanation that I have for the difference between these two patients, other than a four-year age difference, is that their biology, so the, the way the roots, the periodontal ligament, and the bone around the roots and the periodontal ligament interact. So the determinants, the determinants of treatment time, yes, the case complexity, which you cannot you cannot change the case complexity. The patients are the way they come to their to your office. Um, the treatment plan, and I hope I've convinced you that a proper clear line of treatment plan is crucial in how um, how efficiently the patients get treated. So so in de in decreasing the treatment time, patient compliance obviously couldn't stress that enough, but also the patient physiology. And this is where Propel has played a huge role in my office um, because I feel that it levels out the patient physiology. So patients whose teeth move faster and patients whose teeth move slower are now almost on the same, on the same level. And so it sort of would speed up the, the tooth movement in patients whose teeth are more resistant to moving. And you cannot just well maybe i can't from just evaluating their records and doing a clinical exam you cannot determine what group the patient is going to fall in and this is where this is where propel plays a, a, a very big role um so the advantages of microosseous perforations and um high uh, frequency vibration is they activate the biology so the difficult movements become more predictable. In my office, I don't use microosseous perforations. I am starting though, um, so I'm quite excited and I'm excited to be able to tell you about them. Um, so I only use the high frequency vibration. I have a few slides about microosseous perforations that came from Propel, um, so I did not do the research on them. So the practice benefits are that they provide you the clinic provide you with the clinical confidence to quote faster treatment times, and um, they they shorten the treatment time, they reduce the discomfort, and decrease the number of visits. So microosseous perforations, um, the most as I was reading through the literature, um, the most fascinating thing is that they are root protective. So this is a study that was done with uh, applying orthodontic forces on uh, teeth, just regular orthodontic forces on teeth without micro uh, without microosseous perforations, and even just a regular orthodontic force. Caused um, caused some microscopic root resorption on uh, the side on the side opposite the force application, and if there were microosseous perforations in the area, um, the cementum and the PDL healed, and so there was a lot less resorption because um, if the resorption is is minimized, the cementum can repair itself. And this is uh, the Propel V Pro. It's the uh, first and only high frequency vibration device um, for active treatment and for retention. And so what it does is the high frequency vibration activates osteoclasts, which cause bone resorption. They make the bone softer the tooth is moving through bone that is resorbing faster. And on the side where there's bone um, apposition, the high frequency vibration activates osteoblasts and they, they're building up the new bone um, and eventually the new bone mineralizes and that entire process is faster. And so during tooth movement, during active tooth movement, um, the activation of the osteoclasts is what makes the, the tooth movement faster 
and during retention, the bone building properties, the bone building acceleration that happens, um, it makes the retention more stable. And these are articles with research on um, high frequency vibration. In one word, it works. The physical benefits of um, high frequency vibration. This is not my this is not my study, and it's not my patient. Uh, but basically, um, if a patient comes comes back to your office with a little bit of relapse because they did they missed several weeks of wearing retainers, or as a patient would say. I just didn't wear it last night, um, and you see the um, you see the relapse, especially in the lower incisor area. But it does work for upper incisors as well. Um, and the patient still has the original retainer, so you still have the model um, or the scan of the model um, when at a debond with the straight teeth. Oh when they have the the new the when they have a retainer with the straight teeth in it and they use um the propel v pro they can seat that retainer on their teeth and basically use the retainer as an aligner and just the mechanical vibration would um seat the retainer better and after a few days of wearing uh, after a few days of wearing their retainer together with V-Pro, um, the teeth are going to, to re-straighten into their original positions. So um, if there's some non-compliance during retention, there's going to be, um, you can recapture the teeth. Obviously, you should be able to seat the retainer at least a little bit um, in order for that to happen. So the biological benefits of high frequency vibration is decreased bone density with force, increased bone density once the force on the teeth um, stops, increased bone preservation following extractions, prolonged osteoclast activity, increased fibroblast proliferation in the PDL, and improved bone quality at retention. And overall, it's a minimized root resorption just because of the stimulation of the osteoclasts. The practice benefits of high frequency vibration is improved aligner accuracy, decreased number of refinements, increased rate of tooth movement, decreased treatment times, and improved retainer fit and quality of bone. So I'm actually going to show you some patients and I'm going to talk about the practice benefits in my practice. Uh, Propel comes with a uh, with a patient app. Um, my my Propel patients are using it for five minutes. I tell them every evening just because that that makes it consistent. Um, so it's five minutes. It has a timer um, and uh, um, it it stops after the five minutes. Um, and I can sh I can tell you firsthand that the patients who started treatment without getting the V Pro and got the V-Pro about one or two or three weeks into their treatment are experiencing uh, much less sensitivity when they change their aligners, even though they're changing their aligners every three to four days, um, as opposed to the patients who don't have V-Pro and are changing their aligners every seven days for the same rate of tooth movement in the ClenCheck. So I'm going to give you some case examples of, um, of patients whom I've treated in my practice. And I think the first one is not a case that I'm very proud of. He was my first case with Propel, so I just wanted to, I wanted to show you. Um, he's a 37-year-old male, and he came to me saying that he's booked an appointment with his dentist to just put a crown or a veneer on a tooth one, two. And he just wants to know if we could straighten it faster than the dentist can make the veneer. And I said, well, no, we can't. Um, but we could, I would not recommend putting a veneer on that tooth simply because the tooth is very proclined. You would have to you would have to do quite a bit of a preparation. The tooth may need a crown, and then you may want to, after you 
that tooth is straight, you may want to have this tooth straight as well. And then you are going to get a bunch of veneers. Um, and so I sort of convinced him that he should have orthodontic treatment and then think about veneers afterwards. Um, and uh, he wanted the treatment done yesterday, finished yesterday. Um, so uh, this is him after um, uh, three months of treatment. Um, it was a 24 aligner treatment plan and uh, the aligner changes are every three to five days. So I tell my um, patients who have Propel that and they're going to be changing every Wednesday and every Sunday. So that just makes it easier. One aligner is three days, the next one is four days. However, I do teach them that um, with every aligner, they're going to um, evaluate how it's fitting on the edges of the teeth. And if it is not perfectly fitting on the edges of the teeth, they should keep it in for, for five days until the edges of the, the teeth are perfectly seated in the aligner. Um, and so this is him. He's super happy. The one, two is aligned. Uh, I'm not thrilled the, uh, with the upper alignment. The lower incisors are aligned as well. He is just ecstatic. He does not want to have a refinement and he leaves with his clear Invisalign ret retainer and his V-Pro to wear at retention. And I actually saw him the other day um, just down the street and um, he his smile still looks the same and he's uh, using his Propel with his retainer every night. Um, so um, hopefully some uh, more interesting and more complicated cases. Um, this is a 24-year-old male with a retrognathic mandible and a class two division two malocclusion. He has a significant overjet, um, overbite. He has some gingival display on the upper incisors, moderate upper crowding and uh, retroclined upper central incisors. So like a typical uh, class two division two patient. Just take a look at, this is a, a half a cusp, a good half a cusp class two on both sides. And um, his treatment plan was 32 aligners. There were no additional aligners. So this is where this is where uh, V Pro has really changed the way the way I practice is those appointments for the rescan almost don't happen anymore. Um, I have to do fewer rescans, and a lot of times I don't do a rescan for the patients who have Propel. Um, so he's, cha he's changed his aligners every three to five days, and he has worn our full-time class two elastics. So the same treatment plan that I showed you earlier for those patients where you saw the video of the ClinCheck, so it's like a very similar treatment plan, except that this patient is changing his aligners twice a week. Um, he was done in four months. Um, this is a complicated class three patient with a prognathic mandible, um, an edge to edge, um, mal an edge to edge incisor malocclusion with zero millimeters of overjet and zero percent overbite, and it, an anterior crossbite on the lateral incisors, um, really compensated, so proclined upper incisors, retroclined lower incisors, like a surgical class three malocclusion, uh, the patient refuses to have surgery, and um, her treatment plan was elastic, so class three elastics, some lower anterior IPR. I don't do a lot of IPR, and if I do IPR, it's only for a Bolton discrepancy, for black triangles, or for a very sort of severe malocclusion like this, where I want to um, increase the compensation, and I only do IPR on the anterior teeth after they're well aligned. Her treatment time is seven months. Um, it's done in, off, in eight office visits and it's the same nighttime um, clear retainers. Um, so in seven months, this was a surgical class three mile occlusion. She now has a stable bite everywhere. Um, this is a patient who has a narrow maxilla with a very deep bite, so it's a class two malocclusion. Again, a lot of my patients have class twos um, with 100% overbite. And just take a look at the dark buccal corridors. And this is him after five months of treatment and appreciate his whole smile changed. Um, 
but take a look at how much how much the maxilla has widened and i'm going to go back so this is the shape of the maxilla before and this is the shape of the maxilla after um, the overbite is fully corrected and that is done in five months so i don't treat a lot of my young teen patients with Propel. I reserve um, using Propel for my uh, late teen, um, young and older adult patients. Um, and so this would be the youngest patient that I've treated with, uh, that I've treated with Propel. She has a, a high canine and again, that class two deep bite malocclusion. And she's done. She's done in six months. Um, she did have a, she she did have a, um, a refinement, and so that's why the treatment is a little bit longer. Um, I find that those high canines, a lot of times, you almost have to make space in your treatment plan to allow the aligner to to allow the canine to erupt fully, and then. Um, take a new scan and capture the canine in order to align it perfectly. Um, so that's why it took a little bit longer, um, but that work, it worked really, really well. And um, in terms of how much expansion you can do um, in an adult, this is an adult with very narrow arches, a very narrow upper arch, a very narrow lower arch and severe crowding. Um, of the lower of the lower incisors, the upper and lower incisors are retroclined. He has severe wear because of the bite. And this is him after seven months of treatment, a lot of expansion, a lot of dental expansion of the upper and the lower arches. Um, and that again, that overbite correction. It, it, again, this patient needed a needed a refinement. He would have needed a more than one refinement had I done this without uh, uh, without Propel and a really all of my patients who've had Propel have really decreased treatment times. And finally, in a, an older adult with um, uh, uh, with a multidisciplinary treatment, um, she's the um, she's the wife of a dentist. And uh, her chief complaint is that her bite feels overclosed. It feels very uncomfortable to bite down. She feels more comfortable when she's posturing her mandible forward and she's biting the incisors almost edge to edge. Uh, but then if she bites like that, she has a bilateral posterior open bite. And she has um, by this point been, tr been uh, treatment planned uh, by a prosthodontist for a full mouth rehab. One of the complicating factors in this is that she has an implant in the 1-3 and an implant in the 2-3 area, and she does not want to go through a full mouth rehab. Her husband does not want her to go through a full mouth rehab, so they come to me and they say, can you do something about the bite? Uh, can you sort of set the bite so that she's biting more forward, but the posterior bite um, is the, the teeth and the back are touching in that more forward position um, so that um, so that she can get some restorative work done, but not um, a mouthful of crowns. And so um, she's changing her aligners every four days, sometimes every five. Her treatment time is six months, and this is her after the crowns of the upper right quadrant are completed. She's not getting any lower crowns. You can see, you can appreciate the open the opening of the bite, uh, but the crowns on the on the right side aren't done yet. So she basically now has better occlusion on the on the left than on the right. You can you can see that even when you take a look at the um, the crowding of the lower incisors, that's all corrected as well. So when I take a look at my digital workflow without um, the help of the high frequency vibration, th these are the appointments that I do. So quite frequently now um, I can, with uh, the high frequency vib vibration, the aligner check at 12 to 16 weeks we can skip simply because, um, simply because, um, 
most of my patients, their first um, aligner set would have 24 to 36 active treatment aligners, and that's definitely enough time um, to go between deliver aligners and a rescan. But very frequently now, I he uh, I can skip the rescan and go straight from deliver aligners to a debond. So the use of high frequency vibration streamlines the digital workflow. It decreases the chair time and opens up the schedule for new starts and uh, provides treatment in a few in a fewer visits. So uh, to get away from the selling feature, but from what I had what I have to do with. Every time I pay, a patient comes in, I have to educate them about how how clear aligners work, and um, then I educate them about um, accelerated treatment. Um, I have my smile on time promise, and I basically tell my patient your your treatment could be done in if it's a regular treatment, it could be done in um, sixteen to eighteen months, and if you get um, if you get ProPalp Pro, this treatment will be done in eight to nine months, so in half the treatment time. And if you do not, if you're not finished in eight to nine months, I will actually refund you the 500 Canadian dollar fee for the VPro because I really believe that it works very well, and I think you would really benefit from it. Um, and so it's almost like there's it's it's like a money back guarantee, but there are no guarantees. So it's my smile on time promise. Um, I the way I charge the fee, the fee is not uh, charged up front. It's added into the payment plan. So it ends up being two extra payments at the end or three extra payments at the end, depending on how the patient chooses to pay for it. Um, so your treatment will be 50 percent shorter. You will get the money back for the for the Propel V Pro if you're not finished 50% faster. But I require perfect compliance with the aligner wear, and I would know um, what perfect compliance with the Propel, and it would know because um, I can get the um, I can get all the information from the app. Uh, perfect compliance with appointments and hygiene. So for those patients, um, basically it makes those patients financially more responsible to be more compliant. It motivates them to be more compliant. So I really thank you for your attention tonight. Um, and I'm ready to answer um, all of your questions. And I'm going to start by, um, by reading some of the questions here. Okay, so um, uh, the first question is, do you slow down the movement in each aligner when using the V-Pro? The answer is no, I don't. However, I do like to have, I do like to have my um, um, appointment times scheduled in such a way that I see my patient between every 12 to 16 weeks. So I'm just going to tell you how a regular treatment would work. Say an aligner sequence comes comes back with 21 aligners or 20 aligners. I would um, send my technician a note saying, please extend the treatment time to 24 active treatment aligners. So that would mean that I see my patients my patient in 12 weeks and then again in 24 weeks. If this is the case for with Propel, I would do the same thing. And then I would see my patient in 12 weeks. So um, I would slow it down just a little bit, but it really, I am slowing down the movement really only to fit my appointment, to fit the number of aligners into my appointment schedule. Um, the same thing if a, if a treatment comes back with 30, Eight, now that would be a very complicated treatment, but if a treatment comes back with 38 um, aligners, I guess that, yeah, 
that would work that would work just fine so really it's, it's those short short aligner treatments uh, something that comes comes back with anywhere between 18 and 24 aligners i would extend it just a little bit just so that it fits in my in my schedule is four to six months enough time for elastics to work on a full step class two malocclusion well I wouldn't have believed it, um, but I really think that the elastic, unlike using elastics with brackets, where the occlusion is locked just because the teeth are contacting all the time, and elastics with brackets would really give you um, more of a dental compensation and would take a long time for elastics to correct a full. So if, if you're wearing elastics and, and brackets and a full cusp class two mile occlusion, that takes a long time to correct. With aligners, especially if you put bite ramps in your aligners, with aligners, the, um, the elastics are posturing the mandible forward. So take a look at your Invisalign patients who are wearing class two elastics, especially class two elastics to buttons on the lower sixes. There's a reason for that. Um, when they put their aligner, they, when they put their elastics on, their mandible automatically postures forward. If you have a growing patient um, and, and you posture the mandible forward 22 hours a day, it is going to have the just the elastic the wear of the elastics is going to have an effect on the mandible very similar to the mandibular advancement feature on Invisalign that is artificially posturing the mandible forward. And it's going to have a very similar effect to say it's not going to be much different from um, an older style functional appliance such as a twin block. So very different. The elastics, I use heavy elastics. They move the mandible forward and they hold it there. In terms of is it enough time, like again, I would not have believed it until I saw it in my practice and I continue to see it patient after patient. And I recall those patients three years later or four years later and they come back and their occlusions are on. They're class one. Even patients who did not wear their, their retainers really well and they have relapse of their crowding, um, I have seen patients with relapsed crowding, but their occlusion has not relapsed. So that makes me really happy. How long do you use VPRO? Um, so it's five minutes. It's five minutes a night. Um, and when you, when you feel it, when you actually hold on to it, the vibration is very light. I tried to do a video for my Instagram account just to show how it's vibrating and my cell phone camera is not picking up the vibration. That's how, that's how little it is. Um, it's very, very gentle. It's much gentler than the vibration of say, uh, like a fancy electric toothbrush, which is like what I compare it to, what I compare it um, to when I talk when I talk about it to patients, but it's a lot, a lot less. Um, so it's five minutes a night. And um, I recommend continuing to use VPRO into retention. So the patients are using their VPRO um, during treatment and then into retention. Can you use it with regular braces? Yes, you can. I don't have any patients to show you. I just simply don't have the volume of patients with regular braces, um, but there are uh, speakers for Propel who do have cases and they are beautiful. Some of them are palatally impacted canines. Some of them are high canines. It's really amazing. Some of them are extraction cases and, and the results are really beautiful in a short time. All right. And I got a really, I got a, it was not a question, but I got a really sweet note from Lori. Thank you. Um, any more questions? Okay, so um, 
I really would like to thank you for um, for your interest tonight. And uh, um, and if you have any more questions, please um, talk to your Propel rep. They know how to get a hold of me, or you can um, you can get a hold of me through social media. Um, I believe there's going to be a there's going to be a feedback questionnaire that gets sent to you. Um, I would really ap appreciate your feedback. And if you are um, if you are an Invisalign or if you use clear aligners and um, you would like to to learn more, please contact your Invisalign rep as well. I give presentations on how to set up uh, um, how to set up uh, patients cases, both um, treated with uh, uh, Propel and without um, for Invisalign as well. So thank you.